Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings, with me, Greta Chamberlain, and the Realm of Beings. Shifting Impressions, which is one of the vehicles that supports the transmission of the Realm of Beings, is here to assist you in delving into your being by providing numerous topics and discussions for you to intake as you deepen your connection with your inner world. Shifting Impressions is here to assist you in strengthening yourself as you excavate to understand your true nature. Join us today and learn to shift your mindset, shift your thoughts, and shift your focus to recreate your life and produce a new you. Shifting Impressions starts now. Good morning, listeners, and happy Friday. Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. I'm Carol. I'm here again with Greta and, of course, the Realm of Beings. Lee is still away for a few weeks, but we will continue on (laughs) as we always do. We're very happy to be here on the Transformation Network every Friday, 11 a.m., Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Pacific Time. Thank you for being part of this conversation, which will help you to look at your life and your creation of reality, to see what it is you're creating in your life, how it shows up, and help you to gain perspective on how to shift what you are creating. So welcome. If you're new to the podcast, each week Greta downloads a quote from the Realm of Beings, which we discuss. And then later on, the Realm of Beings will come in and discuss with their perspective. This week, our quote we've been given is, live in the now moment. Relinquish your focus on the past. Good morning, Greta. (laughs) Morning, Carol. Good morning. Well, we definitely know time is an illusion. But even before I was aware of that fact, um, I used to subscribe to a quote that I had once heard, which actually stated, the past is history, the future is a mystery, but now is a gift. That's why they call it the present. And now that I understand time is just a human construct and an illusion, the present is always the gift and it's always the now. So let me hear what you want to talk about, Greta. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think that, uh, I think it's what you said uh, is that there is no time. That's one thing we have to understand. There is no time. That is part of the illusion of living in this reality. Okay. Um, And it's very, it's very focused in humanoid construct because when you move outside uh, earth and you move to other uh, individuals and into their realities, you're going to see that that time does not exist. It's like when I, a good example for myself is on the podcast when it's time for the um, realm of beings to speak. Um, I call it switching places. They come forward and I move backward inside myself. All of this is taking place inside me. So they're coming forward, I'm going back. So. As long as they are talking uh, to the audience and to you, Carol, I have no conceptualization of time. I don't know if five minutes has gone by, 15 minutes has gone by. The only way I know that it's time for us to end the show is that either you or Lee say, realm, we're coming to the end. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And that's, um, that's when I know that, you know, then when I switch forward and the realm switches back inside of me, um, then I'm back into the illusion of time. Right. But you actually have mentioned that you don't even realize how much quote unquote time has passed while the realm is with us. Is that correct? 
Absolutely. I have, I have no way of knowing. I don't feel it. I don't feel anything about a time construct. That's why I firmly believe that it's not quote unquote real. You know, people talk about real time. Okay, but what does real time mean? Real time to me is the now. The and now. now is always. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, the thing is that everything, once you actualize, see, there's so many realities out there. You've got the reality of the now that is your present conscious reality. You got the realities of the unconscious taking place. You've got the realities of probabilities. Those are things that are choices for you, but you have not actualized them in this conscious reality. So you have all of that going for you at the same time. A lot of realities are out there. We're just not privy to them because of our humanoidness and because we have blinders on. We had them on when we came in here as humans uh, because you couldn't take uh, as a human, you could not take the energy of everything in existence. It would be even overwhelming. Though, right. Even though we are the force, definitely. But we are the force manifesting ourselves as humanoids at this time. So therefore, we're subject to how the reality works inside this space. You see. so. Consequently, uh, we begin because this place is totally illusory. I hope I said that word correctly. Um, you don't, you believe that things are real that are not real. That's why sometimes I say we're going into the fun house. When you look, when you go into the fun house and you get to the mirrors and you can turn yourself different ways. And you can see sometimes you're skinny, sometimes you're fat, you know. But when you look there, you consciously know that that's not you. You consciously not, know yeah. that that's an illusion. Right. But you, you can look down at your physical body and say, well, my arms aren't short and I'm not skinny in the waist and I'm not elongated. You can look at that and say, that's not real, but it's fun. You see, you enjoy it, seeing how well you can uh, go to different contortions, that, you know. But in this reality, without the fun house, we can't tell that something's not real because we were given senses of taste, smell, touch, sight, hearing. So if the thing fits in this type of category, then we say, okay, it's real. It's a real thing. You know, if I'm feeling pain, I'm feeling that pain. I'm feeling it. So it must be real. Right. You know, I know that you're not into the quantum physics world the same way I am, but technically they say the same thing. Nothing is real. It's all an illusion because on a particle level of atoms, there's nothing but space. There's nothing that's solid. And the whole illusion of if you put your hand on a table, the only reason your hand isn't going through the table is because the electrons in the table and the electrons in your hand are repelling each other but it's basically you creating the energy in the shape of that table, which is an illusion. Absolutely. Um, you're right, I'm really, I don't get into quantum physics this or quantum that, quantum healing. Um, I just basically look at what's going on around me and what I've been taught um, by the realm of beings. So I didn't tag it like, quantum physics. But I do know uh, when they're talking about the atoms, uh, 
protons and electrons and all of that that's working to create that table so that when you put your hand on that table, uh, you it feels it based on what you said to me. However, there's one part, uh, and I don't know, you're more familiar with quantum physics than I am, but there's a part missing there. And the part missing is, several parts are missing. One part that's missing is that you, as the individual, must create first the electrons. And you must first create the atoms. It's not that the atoms are there and they're doing their thing. After you create them, the atoms are going to support you in what you want. See, that's why we say the existence protocol is create, support, support, create. Everything does that. So those electrons and those protons and those atoms, they're there because you've even created them to be there. Exactly. You see? So then they in turn recognize what it is that you want to see there. You want to see a table. But then tables come in different shapes, sizes, materials. So at the unconscious level, you are actually making the decisions very, very quickly about what it's going to be made out of, how many atoms are going to be there, how many electrons you need, uh, uh, what, it legs, like. what color it's going to be. You right. create all that very, right. very quickly. It's faster than the speed of light. Oh, absolutely. So therefore, we can't think that, oh, I did this. And then not only that, but then you've got to create the etheric body. And we've talked about the etheric body in terms of, um, in terms of human, the human physical body. Right. Okay. But everything has an etheric body. Absolutely. Because what is one of the roles of the etheric body? One of the roles of the etheric body is to hold the shape, to hold the characteristics of the thing that we have created. Of the physical illusion. Absolutely. It will right. hold that. That's why uh, most people think of it, the etheric body just as the one for the physical body. And for those that... Uh, uh, let me explain, if you don't mind, what the etheric body looks like. The etheric body, to me, looks like a grid. Think of a human being, the shape of a human being. You cannot denote if it's female or male, but there's a shape. And it has longitudinal lines, a, a vertical lines, and horizontal lines. Okay, so it's, they're crossing each other. So it looks like a cross. Now, people who are in um, uh, doing uh, acupuncture, they call them meridians. Mm -hmm. uh, other people will call them different names. But the bottom line is that they're looking at the etheric body. So the etheric body for a human holds us the way we are, holds us how we are looking, you see. So um, it holds the presence of it. And not only that, but if you go inside your body, all of the cells, each one of the cells that makes up your body. And let's, okay, so we've seen the cell. Let's go inside the cell. Let's look at the organelles that are inside the cell itself. You have created those things. Because you have created your body, your physical body. You are always in charge of your creation of your physicality. That's how you can say, okay, I want to lose weight today. You go, you lose weight. Oh, I'm too thinny, thin, too thin. Let me, uh, let me gain weight. Because you're constantly moving with your body to work with it. I want to have a thin waist. I want to uh, lower my, make my hips smaller. So you are actually in the state of creating your own physical body at every moment. You're in my head, Greta, because I want those things. <laughs> um, let's take a moment. 
with the second line of this quote, relinquish your focus on the past. Um, while we're telling everyone there's no past, there's only now, everything happens simultaneously, why can't we alter things? I mean, it's hard not to speak in the terminology that we're used to, like the word past. Why can't we change things that in our, uh, the line of the arrow of time, why can't we change something that appears to have happened already? Okay, I'll address that in one minute, but I got to go back to the etheric body, Carol, if you don't mind. Sure, of course. Just a minute. Because what I wanted to say was that every cell in the human body has an etheric body and every organelle that's inside the cell also has an etheric body because the etheric body must hold that cell. It must hold it being a mitochondria. You see, it must hold it being a Golgi body or a ribosome, it must hold that. Okay, now back to the uh, focus on the past. Um, repeat that for me one more oh, time. Uh, it says relinquish your focus on the past. And I know a lot of people, because we are programmed to think in terms of time running as a linear uh, progression, so something that happened to us when we perceived ourselves as say 10 years old, we still remember that as being 10 years old, but yet we can't change it even though it's still happening at this time. It, it's hard, I guess, as a humanoid with this concept of time to figure out how to, know. I would love to know what it feels like when you're stepping back and letting the realm come in and having that sense of no time. Because for me, I still think of things that I say, gee, I wish I had made a different choice or I wish I had done things differently, which would affect where I'm at today. And we're saying don't focus on that because that's still happening anyway. You can't change it. So why can't we change it? Well, see, uh, you can change it. You just have to know how. See, that's the thing. You have to know, how am I going to change these things? Because okay. see, everything you created it. So if you created it, that means you have the capabilities of changing it. It's just that we believe that we can't change. Because of the belief of the time concept. Belief of the time concept. Uh, belief in uh, lack of belief in ourselves of who we truly are ah. that's the main thing a lack of understanding who we are if we understood who we are we wouldn't even be probably we wouldn't even have this podcast or have the need for it right because, um, everybody would know that and everybody would be operating from that perspective even though we're in uh, even though we're in a humanoid uh, construct or consciousness reality. The thing is that uh, focus on the past. See, one thing um, is that you can, I think Einstein said this, you cannot create energy, nor can you get rid of it. Right. Energy is there. Cannot be created or destroyed. Right. So, I'm going to take that a little bit deeper than that. The reason why it cannot be created nor destroyed because the energy itself is the force. Right. So the force cannot be destroyed in any way. And the only thing that could destroy the force would be the force to destroy itself. And it's not, it's not into destruction. Right. So um, the thing is that what happened when you were 10 is still in existence. Because once you bring something from one reality to the next reality, and what I mean by that is, um, let's say you want to um, buy a red dress. So you go to the store, you're looking at different red dresses, or you're going online looking for a red dress. 
and you finally found the one that you like. So all the looking is part of your conscious reality. I'm looking, looking, looking. I'm conscious of what I'm looking at. Those so are like that, the probabilities? Right. Okay. Those are the probability. Well, actually, probabilities are in your mind um, what type of red dress you want. Do you want red dress with straps? Do you want a red dress that has long sleeves? Right. That's that's what I meant. Like, depending yeah. on which you're going to end up with a red dress, you just have a lot of probabilities of what it might look like. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, those are probabilities and that exists in another reality. That exists in another reality. So what you're going to do is when you're looking online or you're in the store going through the clothing racks um, for looking for a red dress, you have all these probabilities now that you've created to be with you. If you're standing in the store and you're going, you have a whole rack of red dresses, you have created that whole rack of red dresses. So you have brought from another reality, the, the, that probable reality, you have brought into your conscious reality to the extent that you created the whole rack of clothes. So you've actualized those probabilities, most of them in front of you. So then you start to go through all these clothes, which one am I going to choose? And then you, you find the one, oh, I think I like this one, you see. So all of those, it, let's say you on the rack is 20 clothes. You had 20 probabilities of clothing. You create everything you see, everything you touch, everything you smell, you create it all. So you have decided to look through a rack of clothes. So you're bringing the probabilities, those 20 probabilities out there, you've decided to bring them into this conscious reality so you can flip through them physically. And then from the physical flipping, you choose one dress that you feel fits your taste, okay? Now, what does that mean as far as dress? past, present, future. I knew you get ready to ask me that. Well, actually, what I was going to ask is, again, getting into some of the physical sciences, they say that there are parallel universes where you have made a different choice and probably chose all 20 of those in each probability because they've all existed somewhere at the same time. That is true. That is true. Because I have to give with the parallel lives, because when I do uh, the facilitation work that I do, I have to ask the person, the parallel lives, right. that will they also accept the facilitation process. And I have to get permission from them to extend the energy work that I've done to them. Most of the time, they will say yes. But notice in this reality, I'm only working on one person that I physically know I'm working on, even though I'm doing the work remote, okay? But what I recognize is that there are others that are receiving the work as well, if they want to. That's why I ask them permission to the parallel lives do you, are you accepting of this facilitation? And most of the time they say, yes. I had one individual who told me he was male. I was working on a female. He was male. And he said, no, I don't really? want it. Yes, he did. Wow. And I, told him, I said, well, so wh what do you want to do? He said, I want my own. I want my own facilitation. So mm -hmm. I had to stop 
shutting down and start working on this individual who was in a parallel universe to the person I was working on who's here in this now moment. The I other thing about parallel universes is that it just means that they're running parallel to us in some way or form, but they can almost be any species. Just because I'm working on a human person here in this reality, when I step out into the parallel universes, they don't have to be human. They just want to receive the energy work that I've done. But See, they're not necessarily what came to mind when you told me that this male said no to you was that he was reinforcing separation and not accepting himself as the force. He just, that's a good question. At the moment, I really didn't go through all that with him or even think about that. I just realized that he wanted his own and that was his choice. Right. That was his choice because see, to receive the facilitation in the parallel universe is still a creation of reality by those individuals. And I'm gonna say those individuals because all the ones that are in the parallel universe, as, as I've stated, are not humanoid necessarily. Right. So um, that's what that was about. That was just his creation of reality. I, uh, I would like to have my own because he felt that what I, the energy work that I did for that particular person was not enough for him hmm. to, to deal with his challenge, you see. So that's why he requested his own. And so consequently I gave, I did it. Even though he was in a different universe because when you go remote and, I'm, and to the audience, I'm not talking about remote viewing. Remote viewing means you go to someplace and you just look around and you, you come back. You say, okay, I'm going to Mars. I want to take a look at it. Or I want to go to Los Angeles and take a look at what's happening in Los Angeles. Uh, so you go there and you look around, and you come back to yourself. That's remote viewing. That's what this country was trying to run. I think if I'm not mistaken, out of Stan the program was in Stanford University where they were working to see if people to create spies. Spies, yeah. World War II, I think that was going on. Well, even after World War II, after the Korean War, yeah, you they, know, they were doing that to see, and there was one gentleman, I can't remember his name now, who was supposed to be good at that, but they were trying to create that you could go and remote view instead of sending an actual body in right. there. You can just go by way of your mind, you see. So, um, all of that is all the force, even in the parallel universes, the people are, or the individuals, let me not say people because they come in various species, um, are there operating on create, support, support, create, anyway. And it's so difficult with our human language because you're using the word individual Yet we know from your teaching and the realm's teachings that there really are no individuals. Everybody is one and everyone is the force. But in, order, in order to share that thought patterns with other humans, we are sort of restricted by our language, which Absolutely. is probably why the realm can communicate so well, because <laughs> they're not restricted by that. I think we're ready to come up on our break and, and visit with the realm if you're ready. Um, listeners, just give us a few moments. We'll be back shortly. And when we return, we will continue discussing the quote with the realm themselves. Thank you again for listening to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on the Transformation Network. Welcome back, listeners, to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. 
We have reached that portion of the podcast where the realm will weigh in on the quote that they've provided. Realm, are you with us? Yes. Thank you, Realm. We'd like to discuss the quote you have given us, calling it live in the now moment. Relinquish your focus on the past. What have you to input on this quote? When you don't want to relinquish what you call the past, that means you have an emotional attachment to it. Mm. So therefore your emotions are guiding you to stay in that position, to stay, uh, if it's a low vibration, then you can be staying with the fact that somebody hurt you. You felt hurt by that person, you see. And you forget that in reality, you cannot hurt anybody and nobody can hurt you. That's part of the illusions here in this space. So you hang on to that. Then some of you, you experience the loss of a loved one. You think it's a loss, but the person really is is still living, but you think that the person is lost. So you hang on to sorrow. You hang on to grief. You hang on to guilt. Maybe I didn't do uh, as much as I could have done for this person. That's living in the quote unquote past. When in actuality now, let's bring it up to where we were talking at. There is no past. So what you're doing, you keep on remembering it, remembering it and perseverating on it over and over and over again in the now because the person making their transition is also in the now. Remember, you said earlier in the podcast that energy is not created nor destroyed. And that is because the energy itself is the force. So therefore, everything that is in existence is the force. Therefore, it, can no, it cannot quote unquote die. It may live and exist, but it will exist in another reality of choice. Because where you go is after you make your transition is you develop your own transitional portal. That is your choice about how and what you're going to put in it. It's like being in an empty room and you want to feel, fill the room up. You see, that's all that's happening. So if you're in this reality, relax. Just rejoice with the person. Rejoice that they've had the opportunity to move on. Don't feel guilty, I didn't do. You can only do for somebody as far as they want you to do for them. You, you can see? only support what they create. Absolutely. You can't go any further than that because you're supporting the person. If the person only wants to eat fish all day long, you can't bring in bananas. They won't eat the bananas. You can put, put it up to their face and say, eat this banana. I don't want the banana. So there you go. You've had all these bananas that you think the person should eat. But the person who's eating doesn't want to even look at a banana. You see, they want fish or they want whatever uh, uh, you all eat. Was a steak? So Ralph, it, all, it all harkens back to just accept everyone for themselves because everybody has the right to make their own choices and create their own reality. And we just need to accept them as they are. Absolutely. And what is that, Carol? That is one aspect of unconditional love. Mm. That is loving the person unconditionally. So back to this past. Get over it. 
You don't need it. It's not doing really anything for you if it's hurting you. Now, if it's something that you want to remember, you know, uh, that I had a birthday party and all my friends came over and it was a surprise. It was wonderful. I enjoyed it. Okay, you want to keep on thinking about that? Go ahead. If you want the high vibrational ones, keep thinking about them if you want to. Because the high vibrational ones are, are focusing around the concept of unconditional love. So therefore, unconditional love is stimulating you to love yourself even more. The fact that you were given uh, a happy birthday party by your friends and it was a surprise and you enjoyed it. You want to hang on to that if you want to and say, this was wonderful. I enjoyed myself because that's showing you you love yourself. The things that in the past that don't support you in loving yourself, forget them. How do we do that, Realm? I mean, it's easy to say forget it, but in a practical purpose, how does one really let go of those things? Well, one thing is you thought about it and that's how you created it. So think about it. Think about uncreating it. Just think. Okay. That's, for those people who don't know all these tools uh, the podcast has been talking about, just change your thoughts because that's what created the reality in the first place was your thought. Thought comes first. The emotions come next because they, uh, they push the thought. They give it uh, impact comes from the emotions of it. You know, so if it's low vibration, uh, you know, and I have to say, I know somebody's saying, well, we're contradictory. I, we're not contradictory. Tell you, that, to be perfectly honest with you, there's no low and there's no high. But for right now, for us to explain this concept to you, that is why we are using it. Right. We were just saying with Greta how difficult it is to communicate with the restrictions that the human language gives us in order to get the point across that we're trying to share. Absolutely, absolutely. Now there's some people that go into neuroscience and delve into, well, this is the thought processes and it's going through this and it's going through that. And that is how you're developing. That's wonderful. That is a wonderful thing. But we're not going into all of that technicality with you. It's real simple. Just change your mind. Change your mind. I don't want this anymore. You can even verbally say it. I That's don't what I was want to say. Are there any tools to assist us in doing that? Well, we've always talked to, to you about the QDR. And, and you have talked about it, Carol. You're very yes. familiar with it. And that is quick displace replays. So you can say, I release all emotions and thoughts because uh, you don't know all the thoughts. So you could have anger as an emotion, okay? But the thoughts, you could have a hundred thoughts. You could have a thousand thoughts attached to that one emotion of anger, you see. So the quick displaced replays or the QDR lets you know that uh, I release all emotions, all thoughts that support me in creating and maintaining anger. That's just get rid of them and believe it. See, you've got to take it down into your gut with intensity and believe that you don't want something. Believe that you don't want to continue to experience a dis-ease. Believe it. See, it's interesting. We've heard of people who have cancer and the uh, doctor says, well, you only have three months to live. Well, it's up to the person. If you want three months to live, you want two months to live, you want five years to live, 
It's all up to you. And it's not up to the doctor. Them. It's up to you. They see what the doctors tell them. So that's proof. Absolutely. That you control it. Absolutely. Because you, it's you. They don't control your life. The cancer doesn't control your life. You are controlling the cancer. So you can tell the cancer, look, I don't want you anymore. And then you'll find all kinds of things, supplements that help you to uh, relinquish uh, supporting cancer. You know, going through a different, uh, some of you may choose radiation. Some people may choose uh, chemotherapy. Some people may choose not to go that route. Some people may choose to do acupuncture. Some people may choose to do supplements that assist in getting rid of cancer. It is your choice. And regardless of which way you choose, it does not matter as long as you don't want it. Right. And if I could just interject that by saying you don't want a certain disease does not mean you should ignore any type of treatments. You still should be looking for support in whatever form you choose to do that support, either medically or holistically. And remember in the QDR, the R, the replace with I love myself unconditionally. Absolutely. That is the replacement. That's always the hardest part, though, isn't it, really? <laughs> Love ourselves. It can be. It can be. But think of it as being easy, Carol. Right, right. Think of it as being easy. Uh, because we can always think of things being hard. But what does that do? That it creates it hard. it harder, right. So we want to stay within ease. That's the, that's the big thing for us to stay in ease, but you do not have to keep anything that you don't want. It's all up to you because you have choice. If you created the cancer, then you can uncreate it. And like Carol says, you will find what avenues that you wish to go through, that you wish to use to eradicate it. But, you know, it's interesting because uh, the cancer is uh, very, it's real, it can cause a lot of challenges for people, but you have to create the challenge. And it will support you in the challenges that you create. But other than that, they're very gentle. And you can just talk to them and tell them, you know, thank you for coming, but I, I really would like you to leave now. And most of the time, I've not known that they refuse to leave. It's just that nobody asks them. Mm. You just think, let me do this so I can get rid of them. You see, it's a getting rid of, a getting rid of something. When all you have to do is just very gently tell them, I thank you for coming, for showing me that I held on to little hurts. Now go away. <laughs> yeah. But now I would, I'm requesting for you to leave. And more that's very, time. that's a very helpful tool, Realm. I think that's very uh, specific for what people can do for themselves in their creation of reality. I mean, we use a lot of these words, but sometimes I'm not sure that our listeners are understanding the full impact of what those words mean. And words are very powerful tools. So Absolutely. it's quite important to use the correct ones and to think the correct ones. Yes, but get this, Carol, everything is correct. <laughs> Okay, let me specify, I mean, high vibrational. <laughs> Everything is correct. It, it's hard not to think in terms of good and bad, but that is a habit we have to break. We have Absolutely. to let go of judgment. Good and bad does not exist, really. It's existing for you here so that you can maneuver in this space. Mm -hmm. That's what that is about. Yeah. But uh, that, that QDR is one way of doing it. 
And we want to tell people when you have a challenge, we suggest that you treat the challenge with gentleness. Be gentle with the challenge. When you're gentle with the challenge, you are gentle with yourselves. And when you're gentle with yourselves, that means you are loving yourselves unconditionally. And then it is easier to change your reality. That sort of harkens back to the phrase about treating others as you wish to be treated yourself, the others being, whether they be cancer cells or any type of dis-ease in the body, which is coming from the unconscious. I think that's something we want to let people be aware of. Yes. An yes. unconscious manifestation of things that are going to show up in your body. Right, or show up in your life. You mm -hmm. know, it's like you've divorced a husband or you've divorced a wife. You're glad that you divorced them. You're feeling peaceful. And then you turn around and oops, there they are. So then you say, how did I create that? You see. But that's at the unconscious level, like Carol is saying. Because you don't, you've never heard anybody say, give me cancer, have you? No, that's not. No, but they get it. They get it by way of uh, the unconscious. And they get it by way of lessons. They're lessons to be learned. Learn your lessons. That's why it's important for you to stay in the now. The past does not. Uh, assist you in learning the lesson. It just assists you in perseverating over it, not changing it. You want to change it, leave the past and stay in the now. Because the past is an illusion. Tell you that's got truth. Your now is an illusion as well. But <laughs> as far as time is concerned, just stay in the now is where what we are suggesting for you. Stay there. That makes perfect sense. All right. I have always felt that even before I knew about creation of reality, I always felt uh, the need to live in the moment. I always thought that was the most important thing. And that was even when I thought there was a past and I figure you can't change the past and you usually can't control the future. And now I understand that because there is no past and there is no future. <laughs> there is only the now. Absolutely. And so everything's in the now. At a gut level, I think I was always aware of that. Yes, I'm sure. At some level, all of us are aware of that. That's going to creep up into us, creep up into our knowingness. But like the people that are listening to this podcast are open to what we're talking about. And they're having a, a deeper understanding of, of what we're saying. But as we say every week, when you ask us, uh, what, are, what do we want to say at the end i don't know if we're at the end or not but we want to say now remember to always love yourselves unconditionally we that, still have a few minutes oh good good is to love yourselves unconditionally because it's through love of self that you create your reality if you don't love yourselves you're going to be calling to yourselves uh events people, places, things that are going to show you that you don't love yourself. So that's why if you love yourselves, you're going to bring to you the things that are going to support you in loving yourselves. So see if you can stay in that place. We highly suggest that. Hold yourselves. Greta talked about holding herself in the mirror and saying, I love you, Greta. So some of you just get in that mirror. Hold yourself. You don't have to wait for somebody else to hold you. Hold, you hold you. 
You don't have to wait to fall in love. Fall in love with yourself. Be appreciative of who you truly are. We say every week that you are divine, you are divine, you are divine. So when you're divine, you're loving yourself. You're saying, oh, I really like me. <laughs> I'm a wonderful person. We don't care what Aunt Jane said to you when you were five. It, forget that. Now you're 35 or you're 55 or you're 105. We don't have to remember what Aunt Jane said about us because we are recognizing that that was just a lesson for us in the first place. She was just supporting us in lessons. So our main lesson right now is for us to love ourselves. <laughs> and the unconscious does hold on to everything. So if you're remembering what Aunt Jane told you at five, that was low vibrational, that could be affecting yourself now in the now of not loving yourself. Absolutely. Because some of the things that we carry from when we were children, low vibrational things that we learned as children, we carry those into our adulthood. And we practice them. So in moving from the past, that means you're going to stop practicing those things. You're going to stop it. And you're going to move into the love of self, which will attract, you will create and attract things that support you in loving yourself, not things that support you in hurting yourself. And so, I, I'd like to put in there just the fact that you heard things as a child, people right away want to place blame on parents for children that grow up in what we call a bad way. Again, that's not the parents' fault. That's still their own creation of reality. Absolutely, because you create your reality. You never stop. You just need to be aware of why you created it at that young age. Absolutely. And why you're still holding on to it. Right. Realm, we're, we're going to be gone in about a minute. If you don't mind, I'd like to just talk about something coming up for Greta. Um, anybody living in the New Jersey area or willing to come to Mount Laurel, New Jersey on October 1st at the... Uh, Weston Hotel is a holistic health and healing expo. Greta will be giving a free workshop at 3.45 p.m. You can read about it on Instagram under Shifting Impressions and under therealmofbeings.com. Uh, she will be teaching about creation of reality and how you can control it. It's sort of an extension of our podcast, but it is a free workshop. It's October 1st at the Westin Hotel in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And we hope to see many of you come in and meet Greta in person. It's a wonderful experience. I can attest to that. Um, again, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. And I'd like to thank the Transformation Network for having us. Thank you, Realm of Beings. Thank you, Greta. Until we create each other again, everyone have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week. Love. Once again, thanks for joining us at Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on TransformationTalkRadio.com. As you have explored today's creation of reality experience with the realm and me, Greta, each of you is being supported by us in further developing the understanding that you are not just an individual existing in linear time and space, but a multidimensional force of infinite possibilities who is connected to all.
So begin to create the realities you want. Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Shifting Impressions at TransformationTalkRadio.com. So long until we create each other again next Friday.